Hello and thanks for joining me for this final thought for the day this week uh, on why do we do that in church? Uh, we've thought about why do we sing in church? Why do we have Sunday school in church? Or why do we stand up and sit down? Why, why do we have liturgy? Uh, why do we have the sacraments, the Lord's Supper and, and baptism? And finally today, we're going to ask the question of why do we have a sermon in church? Why, why couldn't we just make uh, church uh, all a bit faster? Why, 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 do, why do we have to sit there and listen to somebody uh, talking for 15 or, or so minutes? Um, why do we have a sermon in church? And uh, to help us understand that, we're going to have a look at the book of uh, the letter to the Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, and beginning at verse 22. Uh, and uh, here um, he's talking about what is happening as God's people are gathering. And he says, You have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. To the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven, you have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? Here, the writer to the Hebrews wants us to see that when we gather together, there, there is something invisible and amazing going on. Uh, there is much more than we can see in the church building uh, or we can see on what we're watching online. When God's people gather together, those who have been brought together by the blood of Jesus uh, then they are part of the universal gathering which is happening in heaven around Jesus. Uh, when we gather together on earth as God's people, uh, then it is part of the heavenly gathering. And so we are there in the presence of God. It says you have come to God, the judge of all. Uh, it's an amazing thing that is going on as the church gathers. Uh, it, it's a thing uh, that, that is much bigger than we can see. Uh, and, and so it is, is, is much more important than sometimes we imagine. We are in God's presence uh, and he has gathered us together so that he can speak to us. Uh, he's got a purpose. He wants to transform us all together to be the perfect bride for Christ. And, uh, uh, and so it's really important that we listen carefully it says uh, in, in the writer of the letter to the Hebrews conclusion uh, to what is going on when we meet together as church. He says, see to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. He reminds them that those who refused Moses when he spoke um, uh, would not escape the punishment. And he says, how much more if we refuse the one who warns us from heaven? When we, uh, when we gather together as the church, God speaks to us as the Bible is read and as it is explained. And the reason we have the sermon is to help us not to refuse him. Uh, God's word is taught to us in a way uh, that we uh, can feel it and in a way that we know how to apply it so that we can be careful that we don't refuse God as he speaks to us. Uh, or to put it positively, uh, we have the sermon uh, so that we, we can learn how to be transformed by God's word into the people that God wants us to be together. Uh, and so that uh, the, the whole of the church universal can be made into the perfect bride for Jesus. It's an amazing vision that the, the writer to the Hebrews gives us here. And, uh, and it's wonderful that we can be part of that. And, and uh, if... <laughs> If we're ever wondering why do we have to, to sit through a sermon, well, uh, it, it can uh, help us if we remember who is speaking. Uh, it's not just the minister who, who is explaining God's word that's speaking. God is speaking through his word and we do well to listen. And also it's good if we can remember the great vision of, of, of what God is doing as he speaks to his people. He's gathering them together uh, to make them into his perfect people forever. How amazing is that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that when we gather together as church, that it's not just what we can see that's happening, but that we are part of a universal and timeless gathering in your heavenly throne room. 
We thank you that uh, when you gather your people together, you speak to us. You speak to us through the Bible as it is read and explained. And we thank you that you have given us uh, people in the church uh, to preach to us so that we might learn uh, to, to receive your word rightly and that our lives might be transformed by it. Now, therefore, Father, would you help us as a church to be those who do listen to you carefully, that don't refuse you when you speak, and therefore learn from your word and are transformed by it. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you'll uh, either uh, come uh, uh, to join us in the building as we uh, gather around God's word and listen to him speak uh, tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, or if you're, you're not able to do that, then uh, why don't you tune in and, and watch the recorded service, which should be up by about two o'clock tomorrow. Uh, take care. God bless.